This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. And Solderweld, bringing innovative brazing products to the HVAC industry with training and support like no one else. So it turned out I haven't taken this out of my bag completely yet. We had uh, a few revelations, a lot of great feedback from the comments in that video while it was up, and um, a lot of different theories of what was wrong. You know, some said I had it on the wrong setting, some pointed out the fact that it was, you know, the value of the RPS versus the Hertz reading was dead on half. And actually at the time of filming that, I didn't catch that um, pattern. I just knew it was way off. Right. You know? Well, so, I'm glad you... I, I didn't get to see the, the video originally, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you sent me the link and, and I did watch it. And I was kind of concerned because I have two of those in my training room. Right. Because Phil Peace definitely, you know, they donated two of them to me. Yeah. And then so I was kind of concerned about it because that's... it's it's really interesting to know what your unit's doing mm -hmm. um yeah and uh, you know i've mentioned this before i it, the feature you know it's not like a feature you have to have even working no. with vrf it was more of a you know just a neat thing to have um and like i said it turned out i spoke with daikin and i spoke with field piece and uh, several of the other guys in the comments as well so like tom powell you know tom yep. right yeah Tom and me had a great conversation and there was a couple others, OC refrigeration, and there was a few others, yeah. really good conversations and, and ideas about what was maybe going on. Uh, Tom assured me that RPS was not in fact a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, yeah, because he'd be the guy that knows. I mean, he right, really- Right, he, he does a lot with Daikin. Yeah. And um, like I said, when I took the class, the guy was really young and um, he made a point of saying it was. Really, he made a point. I remember that clear as day because I'm, you know, I was interested in that specifically. You know, where do we keep track of the compressor's right. frequency? And I remember him saying <laughs> RPS was, you know, Daikin's way of saying Hertz. They just with the Japanese, you know, the language barrier. Right, right, they right, just right. had their own acronym, but it turned <clears> out <throat> that's not the case. And VRV3, which is the equipment I was working on, has about a two to one ratio. Uh, between the frequency and the RPS. Right. BRV4, the newest generation, it can be as much as a third. I wonder um, why they do that. I don't know, I don't know, but it sure made me wrong on this. Um, yeah, because you was ready to, mm, Yeah, you were ready to run it over with your truck. <laughs> I was gonna run it over <laughs> the van. And so, you should have just sent it to me, I would have shot it. Yeah, or Brad. Yeah, or Brad. Brad shot a nest. Ago. I know I saw that um, so we didn't get much of a resolution on the phase rotation I was essentially told to keep an eye on it and let them know if it happened again that's and a tough one and try to get it on camera so that's definitely a tough one I've used that feature probably a hundred times and that was the first and only time I had had it fail the way it did but it did fail I mean I I, I know how to do that feature there's no question there and um, it led me astray so I don't know I don't know. I, I'm not retiring the meter completely. I definitely retract what I said about the phase rotation. So let me ask you a question. Now that you know that the Hertz is right, maybe the phase rotation you're kind of leery about, would you still use this meter? I'm gonna still use it. I am gonna still use it. Would I recommend people spending the premium that you spend to get the 660? Right. I don't know. Cause you can get still a lot of field piece for a lot less money. How many volts DC does it go up to? 600 volts DC is the top end for the straight DC uh, resolution. Right. So 1,000 millivolts, 10 volts, 100 volts, 600 volt DC. Well, messing with this stuff you're messing with, the big, you know, 460 VRF, 
you're going to need something that does, you know, because you could be having, you could have 700 volts DC. Coming off the inverter, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, coming off the yeah. inverter. Right. So, I mean, like I said, though, you really end up spending the premium because this is what they call their fully loaded meter. Yeah. You know, the swivel, but it doesn't remove. A lot of guys didn't like that. You know, a lot of people like the I'd heads. Lose it. I don't care about the heads. I'd lose it if it was me. If I if it came apart. Yeah, I like the swivel versus the. They got away removable. from that. They're you know they used to have a whole bunch of different tools that you could replace the heads with. The 640 and there's another. There's a six. I don't know if it's 620 or or there. There's a couple of them out there right. in the SC series, and they're a lot cheaper and they don't have you know some of those little bells and whistles. If I'm gonna question the whistles working, then it, I, I wouldn't say I'd necessarily recommend dropping the money for this. So at the end of the day, my biggest uh, retraction and teachable moment for myself and everybody else is to make sure you check with specific manufacturers with variable speed uh, equipment and find out if there's a factor, if there's an equation, a conversion, something uh, that will give you true frequency to compare against this feature if you're going to use it because clearly the discrepancy was actually dead on after we peeled all the layers back and I had a chance to speak with all the manufacturers involved. I even called York, uh, some people I know at York with the VRF department and they don't even 100% seem to know what the conversion even is but they know yeah. it's not the same. It's not one to one. So even when I had the discrepancy back then a few months ago um, it, it wasn't because the tool was necessarily flawed. There's no, like you said, there, there's no engineer or no manufacturer that's going to tell you what what hurts you're going to be at in, in, at any given time. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's one of those things you're just going to have to just deal with. One thing I didn't ask the tech support, which I probably will call back to find out, RPS, revolutions per second. Revolutions of what? Because if it's not, if they're not referring to a full cycle of a sine wave, what are they referring to? If they are referring to a full cycle of a sine wave, how is that not the same as frequency? I don't know. It's just you know what sometimes. But you're Diamond Service Group now. Sometimes the Asian manufacturers won't tell us exactly why. I don't endorse that statement. It's true though. It's true. If you was to call me and say, hey. I have this issue with this unit and it's something that we've never heard of mm -hmm. and then I call my my people at Mitsubishi and I tell them and they're like we hadn't heard of that and they call Japan Japan may very well say because we say and not really give you the answer before you leave here can you actually give me the number to Japan so I, I, wish, can have I don't have it myself you don't have the I have to call my guys I have guys that have have people. I have people that have people. That just have Japan in their phone and they just call it up. Yeah. Thanks for coming by just to yeah, just yeah. to talk about the field piece with me. That's a, no, quite, I, quite a drive. I, just hey, to, you know what? It, it really was, I really enjoyed the visit here. I hope I get to meet more guys mm -hmm. with my job now because I'm traveling all the time. Anyway, man. Well, thanks for coming down. I appreciate it, dude. Really good talking yeah. to you. So and, close it uh, out, man. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one.